All right. What does Yeshua see in you? I want to talk to you about a man that you probably know nothing about. In fact, I don't know much about him. He's a part of a group more famous than the Beatles. But you may have never even heard his name. He did great things, but there is no record of them. He helped change many lives, but I can't tell you how. His name is Thaddeus. He was one of Yeshua's 12 disciples. Paul tells us in Colossians 3, verse 23, and whatsoever you do, do it heartily, heartily as to the master and not unto men. Understand this. You may be the owner of a multi-million dollar corporation and be unsuccessful in Yahweh's eyes. Or you may be the janitor of that same company and be right where Yahweh wants you to be. Today, people measure success by how big our building is, how many people attend, how large the budget may be, how many new members and baptisms they had the previous physical year. Society today is consumed with superficial measures of success. As we look to the word of Yahweh, we will find that Yahweh does not measure success the way that man does. The world may look at you as a failure, as worthless, or as a nobody, and you have heard it so much that you might even believe it. The enemy has whispered such negative comments in your ears for years. But if you are a child of Yahweh, you are special. You are greatly blessed and highly favored. I want to take some time and look at Thaddeus' life and see what Yeshua sees you as somebody, even when the world looks at you as a nobody. So let's consider this thought. What Yeshua sees in you. The first, first thing I'd like to say is that people may not know your name, but Yeshua does. The man we're talking about today had several names, by the way. He's called Labaius in Matthew 10, verse 3. <coughs> Philip and Bartholomew, Thomas and Matthew, the publican. James, the son of Alphaeus. And Labaius, whose surname was Thaddeus. He's called Judas, brother of James, in Luke 6, verse 16. And Judas, the brother of James, and Judas Iscariot, which also was the traitor. He's called Judas, not Iscariot, in John 14, 22. Judas says unto him, not Iscariot, Master, how is it that thou wilt manifest thyself unto us, and not unto the world? And he is called Thaddeus, in Mark 3, verse 18 where we go off the names that I did. <clears throat> Andrew, Philip, Bartholomew, Matthew, Thomas, James the son of Alphaeus, and Thaddeus, and Simon the Canaanite. It's human nature to desire a measure of recognition. People go to great lengths to stand out from the crowd and to be unique and different. In England, Prince William is the heir apparent to the throne, and I've heard Prince Harry simply referred to as the spare. Could you imagine having that said about you? He's second class. He is only a spare, just in case something tragic happens to the chosen one. How would you like to be simply known as so-and-so's little brother? Obviously, no one would want to be confused with Judas Iscariot, but we still wouldn't want to be simply referred to as the other one. That is basically the case for this man, Thaddeus. He is called Judas, not Iscariot. <coughs> Throughout your Bible, you will not hear Thaddeus preach a powerful sermon. You will not see him specifically healing someone who is sick. 
You will not read that he ever cast out demons. But it's very possible, even probable, that he did all these things. Now, why would I say that? Because of what is recorded in Mark 6, verse 7. And he, Yeshua, called unto him the twelve, and began to send them forth by two and two, and gave them power over unclean spirits. Then you click to Mark 6, verse 12, and they went out and preached that men should repent, and they cast out many devils and anointed with oil, and many that were sick and healed them. Thaddeus may not have been a Peter, a James, or a John, or even Andrew. He may not have penned a gospel or written an epistle. I submit to you that Yeshua did not want him to be a Peter, or James, or John, or Andrew. Yeshua wanted Thaddeus to be just that, Thaddeus. You may look at other preachers, or teachers, or singers, and desire to be like them. You may long for the opportunity they have encountered. You may desire the talents that they have been given. You may even envy the success that they have experienced. But you are not them. Yahweh has another path for you. It is a better path for you. Simply because it is Yahweh's path for you. The world may not know your name. You may never see your name in lights or go down in the history books, but Yeshua knows your name, and that is worth more than any notoriety of, of a man. You are special in Yahweh's eyes. He knows your name. And as we move further, we will see that people may not realize your worth, but Yeshua does. Mark 3, verse 13, And he goes up into a mountain and calls unto him whom he would, and they came unto him. And he ordained twelve that they should be with him, and that he might send them forth to preach, and to have power to heal sicknesses, and to cast out devils. For whatever reason, we do not have an in-depth record of Thaddeus' service as a disciple of Messiah. But just the fact that he is named among the twelve should show us something. At this point in Yeshua's ministry, there were multitudes following Yeshua everywhere he went. Out of these, this great number of followers, Yeshua, Yeshua only selected twelve. Thaddeus was privileged to be called to be in that number. Whatever your service, Whatever the task that Yeshua has chosen for you, it is an honor to be chosen to serve. Do not let the world tell you that your place of service is insignificant. You have been chosen by the creator of the universe to accomplish something for him. Out of over six billion people in this world, he called your name. He placed you as pastor of that specific church for a reason, Kenyon. He placed you as a teacher to have an impact on, the, on his people. You see Anthony come up here just like a professor at a college. He placed you in that job of yours to reach to your co-workers during a break room. He placed you as a mother, a father, or a grandparent of that child to have an eternal impact. He placed you on that farm to lead the person next to you and to Messiah. We see that with Lee. Whatever your situation, he chooses you to serve him. We will have a calling. Will you treasure that calling or will you just take it for granted? Will you be so prideful as to look at your place of service and compare it to someone else? and become bitter because yours is not as prominent or a position as someone else's? Just a little added encouragement. 
even before Yeshua chose Thaddeus to be his disciple, Thaddeus was precious in Yeshua's eyes. Before the foundation of the world, you were precious to Yeshua. According as he has chosen us in him before the foundation of the world. If you turn to Ephesians chapter 1 verse 4, according as he has chosen us in him before the foundation of the world, that we should be holy and without blame before him in love. You were worth enough to Yahweh for him to send his son to die for you. You were worth enough in Yeshua's eyes for him to go to the stake for you. The world may say that you are a nobody, but Yahweh says you are somebody. People may not know your name, but Yeshua does. People may not realize your worth, but Yeshua does. And we also see that people may not recognize your effort, but Yeshua does. In my 64 years, I have never heard a sermon on Thaddeus. In fact, while studying for this message, I found very few. You probably won't read a book about, about him. The fact is, you may never get to the pat on the back that you think you deserve. People may never see all that you do. They may not see the long hours and late nights. They may not know the financial sacrifices that you have made. Others may not know of the emotional struggles and burnout that you have had to endure. And I'm not referring only to ministry issues. There are rewards for those who are simply faithful wherever Yahweh has placed them. Colossians 3 verse 23, And whatsoever you do, do it heartily as to the Master, and not unto men knowing that of the master you shall receive the reward of the inheritance for you serve the master messiah whatever you do do it with all your heart yahweh will reward your faithfulness don't waste your time waiting and longing for large opportunities which may never come but faithfully handle the little things that are always claiming your attention Though we do not have the backstory of Thaddeus' life, we are certain that like Peter and James and John and Andrew and Levi, he left everything he had in order to follow Yeshua. Notice the conversation between Peter and Yeshua on the subject of rewards in Matthew 19 verse 27. Then answered Peter and it said unto him, Behold, we have forsaken all and followed you. What shall we have therefore? And Yeshua said unto them, Truly I say unto you, that you which have followed me in the regeneration when the Son of Man shall sit on the throne of his glory, you also shall sit upon twelve thrones, judging the twelve tribes of Israel. Though the world may not recognize your effort, though you may never be rewarded here, Yeshua has much more in store for you. You too have an eternal reward. Matthew 6, 19, Do not lay up for yourselves treasures on earth, where moth and rust destroy, and where thieves break in and steal. But lay up for yourselves treasures in heaven, where neither moth nor rust destroys, and where thieves do not break in and steal. Every deed done in the name of Yeshua will be blessed and rewarded in eternity. Men may not recognize your effort, but rest assured that Yeshua knows and he will reward your faithfulness. Mark 9, 41, For whosoever shall give you a cup of water to drink in my name, because you belong to Messiah, truly I say to you, he shall not lose his reward. I know you feel that it is all in vain. You feel that you are wasting your time. You are ready to throw up your hands up and quit. The world says you should. The enemy says you should. 
You think you should. You may never have anything that the people of this world would want. You may never have power. You may never have prominence. You may never have possessions. You may never have prosperity. But child of Yahweh, you will stand before the judgment seat of Messiah. 2 Corinthians 5.10 For we must all appear before the judgment seat of Messiah, that everyone may receive the things done in his body according to that he has done, whether it be good or bad. And at that judgment seat, there will be crowns given to the faithful. We read of five different crowns in the word of Yahweh. The first crown is incorruptible crown, awarded to faithfulness to the master. In 1 Corinthians 9.25, and every man that strives for the mastery of the is temperate in all things. Now they do it to obtain a corruption, corruptible crown, but we an incorruptible crown, the crown of life for the person who endures and overcomes temptation. James chapter one verse twelve. Blessed is the man who endures temptation, for when he is tried, he shall receive the crown of life, which the master has promised to them that love him. Then we have the crown of rejoicing. This is the soul winner crown in 1 Thessalonians 2 verse 19. For what is our hope or joy or crown of rejoicing? Are not even you in the presence, presence of our master Yeshua Messiah at his coming? Then we have the crown of righteousness. This will be given to those who anticipate and live in the light of the return of Yeshua. 2 Timothy 4 verse 8. Henceforth there is laid up for me a crown of righteousness, which the master, the righteous judge, shall give me at that day, and not to me only, but unto all them also that love his appearing. And then we have the crown of glory. This will be given to the faithful ministers who give themselves to lead and feed the flock of Elohim. 1 Peter 5 verse 4, And when the chief shepherd shall appear, you shall receive a crown of glory that fades not away. We may not know very much details about Thaddeus' story, but I can assure you he stored up treasures in heaven. The world may not know your name. They may not realize your worth or recognize your effort, but Yeshua does. And if he does, isn't that all that matters? There's a Fox's Books of Martyrs records that Thaddeus or Jude was crucified for his faith at Edessa in AD 72. And others believe that he was pierced with arrows when he refused to deny his faith in Messiah. Regardless of the method, it's commonly accepted that he was a martyr for his faith in Messiah. He was bold and he was faithful. He was somebody. Have you listened to the attacks from the enemy? Somewhere along the way, did you walk away from your service because you felt unworthy? Did you quit because you thought no one saw or cared what you did? If you walked away, chances are you were serving for the wrong reason in the first place. I encourage you to remember who called you. Who sent you out who will enable to accomplish his will in your life? His name is Yeshua. So, you think you are a nobody? Well, Yahweh says, you are somebody. And that's all that really matters. Yahweh bless. Hallelujah.